years ago. They finally came to fruition, and the first thing you know, the other countries, Mexico and Canada, take us to the World Trade Organization and say that we are being unfair to Mexico and Canadian uh, cattle producers. I didn't really care, but the folks in the WTO did. And they said, okay, you need to change your rules a little bit. Before we could, we could the packers could look at a calf and say, product of the United States, Mexico, or Canada, or Australia, or whatever. The WTO says you can't do that anymore. You've got to say where they come from. So they couldn't be product of all three, you had to go to one. So the consumer preserved the right to know where the cattle came from. There's a few other little rules or things. So the USDA goes back and they change the rules, talk to the WTO lawyers and say, they look at it and they say, okay, let's do it. So we pass that on up to WTO and the enemy, or the people that didn't like that, they filed a lawsuit and they asked for a temporary injunction to stop the implementation of the cool rules. Well, they lost. The judge just poured them out. She wrote about a 31-page uh, answer, I guess you call it, or whatever is a better name for it. But anyway, basically she said, no, nothing, nothing you said is right. USDA is right. In the middle of all that, several groups, ag groups, came to the aid of USDA. We don't often do that, but this time, they're on the right side. Uh, U.S. Cattlemen, National Farmers Union, uh, a Consumer uh, Protection Association, and the National Sheep and Goat Race, or U.S. Sheep and Goat Race, whatever they call themselves. And they want their sheep and goats labeled U.S. So when the consumer goes in there, you've got Australia, you got who knows where, people hopefully will buy U.S. The surveys say that about 85% of the Consumers would prefer to buy U.S. beef. We raise U.S. beef. I will admit I fed some Mexican steers one time. I will tell you that I'll never feed cattle again because it's a good way, place to put a lot of money in something that you don't get to see and you don't get to, you just pay the bill at the end. But anyway, it's going to take somewhere between 250000 and 750000 to defend this lawsuit to the end. The people on the other side, who are the meat packers, NCBA, and Mexico and Canada, have got the money. The packers want to not have cool. They want to be able to just get the product in, not to worry about origin or anything like that, put it in a package and put it on a consumer and call it Big Bob's Beef or Angus Beef. Not necessarily where it means Angus, but whatever. That's that's the thing. If they want to sell you a brand, Hickory Farms, Tyson, whatever. Tyson is the largest packer in the United States, the largest meat producer. JBS owns Tyson. JBS is owned by Brazilians. You think, okay, no big deal. Brazil has three times more cows than the United States does. Now you get to thinking, you say, hmm, that's why JBS doesn't want cool. Because they see our numbers shrinking, 2% this last year. They see the prices coming up. And folks, when those prices get to a certain point, the ships are going to roll. Right now, the Brazilian beef, a lot of it can't come here because of foot and mouth disease. We'll try to keep that as long as we can down there. But at some point, they're going to, we're going to have to open up to the... Argentina is the same way. About a third of Argentina is closed because of foot and mouth disease. Uh, we've, you know, we've got to be careful. Australia's been in the drought. They're not such, such a big hazard anymore. But I'm telling you, you can pick an industry. Color TVs, tennis shoes, blue jeans. <laughs> We used to make them here in the United States, tools. I can remember when the tool people would call me when I had poultry houses, and they'd say, man, you need to buy these West Coast tools, they're the best thing in the world. And I said, where are they made? Well, they're making their van, but don't worry about it. they're just as good as a, as a craftsman. Well, they weren't. They've taken all of our industries away from us. We don't make nothing right now except cattle. 
and we raise some chickens and we raise some sheep and goats. But for the most part, our industry is overseas. First, we, we export, exported some of the machines to make it. Then we exported the technology by educating their people or just moving over there and doing it for them. And they have cheap labor. That guy in Mexico that you're competing against, he doesn't pay that war on taxes. He doesn't pay Social Security. He doesn't pay workman's comp. He doesn't have to have insurance on his stuff. <clears throat> He can buy a lot of the drugs that we buy, same drugs, for about half price because we have to have all this protection and all these, this insurance and all these studies before we can approve something. That's, that's where we've got to have cool. And then on top of cool, then we've got to tell the consumers to buy USB. And we've got to tell them that because it's the safest and it's the highest quality. And I don't know how much longer we're going to be able to afford to feed cattle. Because corn, we can produce a lot of it. With your product, I hope that we can produce more. Because that's the only thing that's saving us right now. Because corn's gone up. We've got ethanol mandated. We'll get through all that. We've got to do it together. But God leave, we got to, we got to fight the cool. So buy the raffle tickets. We need to get your, we've already gotten your letter from me saying how bad we need the money at ICA. We've already sent $10,000 to the country to, to defend cool. Our directors did that. And uh, I wish they'd wait for cattle drive where we got some money in, but they went up, they said we needed it, so we sent it. But anyway, that's where cool is right now. It's still a lawsuit. So far, the judge has really looked good on us. But the problem is, he's a federal judge. <clears throat> then there's appeals court. Then there's a Supreme Court. These other guys prepared to go all the way. We have to be too. USDA will go, unless, of course, they're off for 15 days or something. <laughs> but the judge probably wouldn't be one of the years, so I guess that's all right. Ah. Uh.